A titration is a reaction that allows the chemist to precisely determine a quantitative measurement for a substance in solution. There are many different types of titrations, however the most common and the one that this video will focus on is an acid-base titration. In acid-base titrations, we use a standardized solution of known concentration to neutralize a solution of unknown concentration. The first step of any titration is to properly clean all the glassware needed for the experiment. Wash everything with soap and water, and then rinse three times with deionized water, ensuring that the deionized water rinse touches all surfaces of the glassware. Store the glassware safely until it is needed. The burette is the most important piece of equipment for this experiment. As part of the cleaning process, ensure that the stopcock, which is the handle at the bottom which controls the flow, works properly and that it allows for precise control. Always store the burette in an upright position with the burette clamp. The solution that we fill the burette with is referred to as the titrant. This is often, but not always, the solution of known concentration, which is called the standard. Before filling the burette, it must be primed with the titrant. To prime the burette, pour a small amount of the titrant into the burette. Do not pour directly from the stock bottle. Instead, transfer the solution to a beaker and use the proper pouring technique with a glass rod and funnel. Remember to lift the funnel as you pour. Open the stopcock and let it flow into a waste beaker. There will always be a small amount of solution left in the burette tip. Never try to get that part out. Priming ensures that all of the solution in the glassware is the titrant and is not diluted by the deionized water rinse. Now fill the burette with the titrant. Pour a small amount at a time. You should fill the burette as close to the top as possible without going over the highest fill line, as this will waste your solution. However, do not waste time trying to fill exactly to the zero milliliter marker. All that matters is that you record the precise starting volume measurement. When you're done filling, remove the funnel and store it in the beaker containing the titrant. The next step is to prepare the sample solution. You will need a clean beaker, an Erlmeyer flask, a pipette, and a rubber bulb. The sizes of the glassware will differ from experiment to experiment. A pipette is a piece of glassware that allows for precise volume measurements. We will be using volumetric pipettes which only have one volume marking on them. Taking an aliquot is the term used for drawing up a specific volume of solution into the pipette. To take an aliquot, first place the pipette into the beaker containing the solution. Then squeeze and hold the bulb and place it on the end of the pipette. Place the bulb on the end just enough to form a seal. It should still be easy to pull it off without much effort. Slowly release pressure on the bulb to draw the solution into the pipette. If the bulb fills with air before you have drawn up enough solution, remove it from the pipette and swiftly place your thumb over the end so not to lose the solution. Squeeze and hold the bulb and place it back on the pipette. Draw enough of the solution up so that you are above the fill line. 
being careful not to draw it up into the bulb. Remove the bulb from the end of the pipette and swiftly place your thumb over the open end so not to lose solution. Gently remove pressure from your thumb and let the solution level drop slowly until the bottom of the meniscus is precisely on the fill line and apply full pressure again. Carefully but swiftly transfer the aliquot to the clean flask and release your thumb to allow it to pour out. As with the burette, there will always be a small amount of solution remaining in the tip of the pipette. This is accounted for in the volume, so do not force it out. Before taking an aliquot of solution, we must prime the clean pipette. Place a small amount of the sample solution in a beaker, rinsing it out and discarding it in the waste beaker. That beaker is now primed. Place a small amount of sample back in the beaker. To prime the pipette, draw an amount of the sample up into the pipette using the proper technique and then discard it into the waste beaker. Now take an aliquot using the method described. The success of your titration depends on ensuring that the correct volume is transferred. Do not transfer if you are not precisely on the fill line. Start again as needed. In an acid-based titration, we will carry out a neutralization reaction and we will use an appropriate indicator to let us know when the reaction is complete. The end point of a titration is the point at which the indicator first changes color. The specific indicator that is used is the one for which the end point is very close to the equivalence point for that specific acid-base reaction carried out. Add two or three drops of the indicator to the flask or the amount that's asked for in the experiment instructions. Swirl the flask to incorporate the indicator. Now read the starting volume of the burette. Remember to record a volume in which your final digit is an estimate. For example, on the 50 milliliter burette that's used in this video, there are markers for every 0.1 milliliter. The first trial will be what I call a quick and dirty trial. Here our aim is not precision, but only to get an estimate of how much titrant is going to be required to reach the endpoint. This type of trial is not always used. However, it often saves time in the long run by getting an estimate of where to expect the endpoint. Here is the technique for titrating. One hand should remain on the stopcock so you can stop the flow of solutions quickly. Your other hand should be around the neck of the flask with the sample solution, which should be swirled continuously. Titrate until you notice the first sign of permanent color change. This is the endpoint and should be an intermediate color between the two colors of the indicator. If one of those colors is colorless, then the endpoint color will be a very pale version of the other color. As you titrate, you will notice the titrant changing colors. Swirl continuously to allow the solutions to mix. When you've reached the endpoint for the quick and dirty trial, record the final volume. Subtract the initial from the final to get the volume of titrant used for the quick run. This gives you an approximate volume, but will likely be more than is needed for a precise titration. Between each trial, clean and rinse your flask and repeat the procedure for taking an aliquot. 
add more titrant as needed so that you do not run out between trials. For your next trials, you are aiming to get to the precise endpoint. Do not forget to add indicator or to record the initial volume in the burette. Once you have an estimate from your quick trial, on subsequent trials, you know how much volume is likely needed. So let the titrant run rapidly at first, swirling the flask continuously until you are within a couple of milliliters of your expected endpoint. At this point, slow the flow until you are adding drops. Add the titrant drop by drop, swirling continuously. You will notice a color change. When you see this, stop the flow and swirl. If it is not permanent, continue to titrate. Stop at the first sign of permanent color change. Record the final volume. Repeat the titration as required in the experiment.